Hallelujah. And I love you guys, and thank you for being here today. Happy 2021. How many of y'all are thankful that 2020 is over? Amen. Yeah, it's over. Now listen to me very carefully, all right? Because God's, God's throwing me some curveballs right now. And uh, so y'all going to have to really work with me because i got to be very careful that I, that I hear his voice and not hear man's applause. So I, I want you to lean in really quick. Um, listen, every November, uh, this is January of 2021, but every November, uh, I'm going to turn house lights up too. I want to see who I'm preaching to. I can't see nothing up here. I want to see y'all smile, frown. I want to see what you look like this morning. Amen. I see some waving now. Amen. How many of y'all glad to be in God? There you go. Lights are coming up. God said, let there be what? Light. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. So, man, listen, every November for the last 10 years, I take that month, the whole month of November, and I'm not doing this for an applause. I do this for, for my relationship with Jesus Christ. But I take the whole month of November and I seek the Lord. I ask for wisdom. I ask for vision. I ask for direction for Elkhorn Baptist Church. I believe after reading the Bible, vision is that important. Matter of fact, the Bible says that where there is no vision, the people perish. Y'all understand why I give y'all vision every January. Listen, this is not just a, for me to get up here and say, here's where we're going. No, listen to me. The only way this is going to happen is if you become a student of Jesus Christ and not just hear his word, but activate his word into your life and let God start using you on purpose. Some of you have been sitting for too long. And it's time. And how many of y'all believe we're living in the last days? Y'all, we better start acting like that's the majority of people in here. It'll make you live different. It'll make you live different. So I believe in divine direction, godly vision. And listen, from March the 13th, I'm going to teach you a little bit before I, before I give you this word. From March the 13th, 2020, that's the day that everything went cray cray. March 13th, everything went south. Up to now, everything has changed. Have y'all not noticed? Everything has changed. Everything. Is, and whether you believe me or not, and listen, this is something God speaks to me. And, and I'm going to give it to you, whether you believe me or not, watch this, it'll never be the same again. I believe, according to the Word of God, we're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. God is waiting on His church. And I believe, listen to me, until the church gets it right, the world will never get it right. And it starts at home. It starts at home. So today, man, listen to me, I, I, I really believe with all that I am, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to surrender? Y'all know most churches are surrendering right now. They're giving up. They say, well, that's just the way it's going to be. And so we might as well just join in. And I stopped by today, 3145 East Elkhorn Road, to tell this church, as for me in this house, as for me in this house, we will serve the Lord. There's got to be an auction in your spirit that says, I will not bow down to no king, to no government, to no man. I serve the Lord. And if I serve God, and if God be for me, who can be against me? I need somebody who got the auction of God in your life to say, I'm standing for God. I'm not bowing down. Hallelujah. We're not bowing down. We're not bowing down. We're not bowing down. I believe in the latter rain. And the latter rain is going to come, hallelujah, mightier and stronger than ever before. I need somebody to believe what I'm preaching today. You say, Brian, you need to settle down. No, I'm telling you, listen to me, very, 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 I'm passionate. This is the last days. And the Bible says, we will do greater things. We'll do greater things. Than what Jesus Christ himself. Uh-oh, pastor. You say, yeah, John 14, 12. That's what it says. <laughs> but it ain't going to. God will not use somebody bowing down to man. He's looking for a, a Shadrach, a Meshach, and a Bendigo. That when everybody else bows down, they're still standing. And I believe that in my spirit today. 
So here's what God spoke to me on November the 10th. Well, I'm quivering. My liver's quivering. Hallelujah. November the 10th. November the 10th. I write things down. I used to be a note taker, but I write them down now. November the 10th, the Lord spoke these words into my spirit. It's time to rebirth and rebuild. It's time to rebirth, for the Holy Ghost, and rebuild. It's time to rebirth and to rebuild. So that's exactly what my commission for, for 2021 as your pastor, as your leader, we're going to rebirth and we're going to rebuild. We're going to rebirth and we're going to rebuild. God did not die for a sissy church. God did not die for a church that submits to anything. We submit under the unction of Jesus Christ. He is our leader. He is our God. He is everything that we need. How many of y'all believe that? He's everything. But we got to quit bowing down to man. Now, I know somebody's already, y'all already, I feel, I feel a cold wave. But it's all right because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach what God laid upon my heart. I want you to go ahead and look at your neighbor. I want you to help me preach. It's time to rebirth and rebuild. Tell somebody it's time to rebirth and to rebuild. Tell somebody else it's time to rebirth and to rebuild. Facebook, come on. It is time to rebirth and to rebuild. Rebirth and rebuild. That's all you're going to get out of me in 2021. Rebirth and rebuild. Rebirth and rebuild. Somebody say rebirth, rebirth. and rebuild. So what does rebirth mean? It's so good. Rebirth means these words. Start to flourish or increase after a decline. <laughs> the average church now has got 30% of its congregation back. But I speak life over you today. We will rebirth and we will rebuild after declining. I speak life over this congregation that our tithes and offerings will be greater than it's ever been in the history, in the history of Elkhorn Baptist Church. And that's to make a finance team shout. And I don't say it to get applause. I'm telling you, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. And here's one thing, Joy, I, I'm, I'm telling you what God's speaking unto me. In these last days, God is going to raise up prophets, men of God. Who is going to speak the word of God with no reservation, with no hesitation. Thus saith the Lord. And I got a thus saith the Lord word. And also rebirth means revival. Isn't that crazy? Revival. In other words, it's an endless cycle of birthing. It's an endless cycle of birthing. So in other words, we as a church or you as an individual should constantly, not just on Sundays, not just when you have God bumps. We should constantly be bringing forth and birthing the fruit of the Spirit every day of our life. And I'm going to say something. going to mess some people up. But this is truth. You know that everybody, if you're saved, you've got the Holy Spirit. All right? Now hang with me, all right? Because I'm going to go deep with you all today. It's time to quit having vacation Bible school at church. But here's the difference between having the, the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm a, <laughs> yeah, I done messed up their religious folk. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost with fire, you, you can't hate people. You can't hurt people. I feel the Holy Ghost. You, you, you feel something and you got the fruit of the Spirit coming out of your life. Even those who throw you down, tear you down. And this, I'm telling you the difference between Holy Spirit and baptism of the Holy Spirit, you'll love, you'll have joy, you'll have peace, you'll have patience, you'll have kindness, you'll have goodness. I'm hallelujah. You'll have those things. I can't hate you. Anybody who says these words, I hate you, they ain't baptized the Holy Ghost. There's no way. Because God is not hate, God is love. Love. Now, if that offends you, study your Bible. There's a, John says, I baptize you with water. But there's going to be one who follows me. Who's going to baptize you with water and fire. Hey, come on, I'm just telling y'all. This is truth. So you know what? Here's what God's telling me in my spirit. It's going to be the working of the Holy Spirit in these last days. It's going to be you can't quench it. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. You let us in here today 
be under the right influence of the Holy Spirit, oh, there's something God's side is going to happen in here today. Now, listen to me. We have touched the hem of his garment. But listen to me. There is more. 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 Don't be satisfied with just coming to church one hour a week. I got to get busy. <laughs> What's rebuild mean? Rebirthing means it's a continuous continuation. It's an endless cycle of birthing. It's an endless cycle of birthing. Endless cycle of birthing. I'm, I'm bearing fruit every day of my life. And when I mess up, I ain't got to go to man. I go to the man. He'll forgive me of my sins, cleanse me of all unrighteousness, and help me get back on track. Rebuilding means this. I love this. To replace. Uh-oh. Restrengthen. Reinforce. Revise. Reshape. Or reorganize. You know what this is? It's an endless cycle of ministry. In other words... We should always, as a Christian, you should always constantly be replacing, re-strengthening, reinforcing, reshaping, reorganizing, rebirthing, and rebuilding in ministry. You should always do that. You should always rebirth and getting stronger in the Lord. Come on, somebody. You should always rebuild. Just because it worked last year, watch, don't mean it's going to work this year. God will throw you a curveball. So here's, here's the title of today's sermon. Rebirth, rebuild. If you're a note taker, rebirth, rebuild. Rebirth, rebuild. Say it with me. Rebirth, rebuild. Listen, we're going to stick in this vein all month. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, let me preface this. We're going to stick in this vein. I'm going to preach. I'm going to teach. I'm going to lay a vision at your feet and watch this. Then you've got to do something with it. You've got to do something with it. So the Bible says, if you have your Bible... This, is a, this, this verse is right here. I've read it one way and I thought another way. But how many of you know when you start rebirthing, you think it, new word comes in, new word goes out, new word come in, new word goes out? Watch this. Genesis chapter 11, verse 5 through 7. Let me read this over y'all. How many of y'all glad to come to church today? How many of y'all glad y'all are here today? Amen. I'm glad you're here. Now listen, Genesis chapter 11, verse 5 through 7, New Living Translation. But the Lord came down. Don't tell me the Lord can't come down. Matter of fact, he's here with us right now. But the Lord came down and he took a look at the city. Watch this. And the tower of people were building. Building. Look, he said. The people are united. Here's a, here's a key verse. I'm going to preach on this next week. And all speak the same language. Huh. They're united and they speak the same language. They're united and they speak the same language. Y'all with me? They're united and they speak the same language. After this, this is what God says. Nothing they set out to do, hallelujah, watch, will be impossible for them. You know what's going to make Elkhorn Baptist Church stand out? It's going to be that when we unite and we start speaking the same language. And when we unite and we start speaking the same language, y'all watch me. You know what's going to happen? Anything, I feel the Holy Ghost, anything we set our minds to do, we can do it with God. Somebody help me preach today. Any, you name it, anything. That's why God says, for whatsoever you ask in my name, it shall be given. You know what that is? That's called unification. There's power in it. And watch this. He said these words. For some reason, God said, uh, they're united and they, they speak the same language. He said these words. Let's go down and confuse the people. Oh, why else? Why did he say that? It looks like God would want us to be united and speak the same language, Right? But for some reason, he said these words, let's go down. <laughs> let's confuse the people with a different language. Huh. Then they won't be able to understand each other. So let me, can I give y'all a quick history lesson on this real quick? Genesis chapter 11 is after the flood. Everybody say after the flood. Come on, everybody else say after the flood. The flood is when the whole world, not, not just Kentucky, not, not just California. I'm talking the whole world was destroyed. 
And God told the children of Israel, listen to me very carefully. As after the flood, the whole earth was destroyed. God says, I want you as my children, I want you to replenish and I want you to repopulate the world. Replenish and repopulate the world. But watch this, Jimmy. The children of Israel said, I don't think so. I don't think so. They, they said, we're going to stay right here. Alice, this is crazy. We're going to stay right here. Right here. And we're going to build a tower. Straight to heaven. And touch you. I'm going somewhere with this. If y'all will lean in and listen to me very, very, very quickly. We're going to stay right here. We're going to build a tower. And we're going to touch you. Now, I want y'all to listen to me. The children of Israel rebelled. Everybody say they rebelled. Because God told them to go north, east, south, and west, replenish and repopulate. They said, we don't think so. We're going to build a tower. And we're not just going to build one tower. This tower is going to go from earth to heaven. And we're going to touch you. This is so good. They disobeyed the Lord and pride set in. Pride set in. And they literally started building a tower. And if you know anything about this tower, it's called the Tower of Babel. Come on, it's the Tower of Babel. Can I go deep with y'all this morning? I really want to give y'all a good word. The Tower of Babel. Y'all know what the Tower of Babel stands for in Latin? This is good. False religious system. Mm, mm, mm. False religious system. If y'all listen, don't get mad at me. I'm preaching the Bible. This was the first false religious system birthed into the world. And here, how that first false religious system, we, watch this, we still got it today, Sarah. We still battle false religious systems today. And this was thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Here's how this false, the first, the first false religious system was birthed into the world. They said, I got a better idea. Uh, I've, got, I've got a better way than, than God. God really didn't mean what he said. How many of y'all have ever read that in the Bible? People will say, well, God really didn't mean it like that. You better back up. Let's do church the way we want to do church. We really don't have to follow God's law, do we? We really don't have to follow the Bible, do we? Don't we serve a God of grace, mercy, kindness, gentleness? Yeah, we do. But also he's a holy God. He's a holy God. And they said these words, we, let's just do it our way. They had a Burger King moment. Does that sound familiar? Come on, son. listen, you've got to do a heart check today. I've done that before. I knew God told me to do something and I rebelled and I went the opposite direction. How about you? Come on, y'all. Well, God really didn't mean it like that. They're doing it over there. So if they're doing it over there and getting away with it, how come I can't do it over here and get away with it? You better back yourself up. <laughs> Sounds like the 21st century church. We got 131 churches in Taylor County. Why? You know why? I'm going to bust this car. I'm going to go ahead and hit this right over. Because we got man. And when something don't go right in the church... Man will say, I'm not going to do it that way. I got a better way. And so they pick up where God supposedly called them to. And then they go down the street a half a mile and build another church to run it the way that they think they should run it. I'm preaching really, really good. Uh, yeah. So here's, here's literally the scary part. I thought about this. They said, listen, we're going to build a tower from earth to heaven. I know God told us to repopulate. I know God told us to go north, east, south, and west. I know God told me to be a preacher. I know God told me to do this. I know God told me to work in the ministry. I know God told me to stay faithful to my family. I know God told me, but I got a better way. So they went from earth and tried to go to heaven. But how many of you know that, that ain't going to happen? God himself looked down from heaven, Willie. And he said, God said this, let us go down. Let us go down to earth. And God seen two things. They were unified and they spoke the same way. He said, no, 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 no. And listen, these, these were the children of Israel. But God says, no, I'm going to confuse them. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna confuse them. This is how powerful, listen to me, the word of God is. Because here we are, the 21st century church, and we're saying the same thing that they said thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. This is the only, this is the way the Bible works. That's why I love the Bible. They said, you know what? I'm gonna do it my way. I, I'm gonna go where I wanna go. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I'm preaching, hallelujah. I can sin, I can do what I wanna do, and I can still touch God. I'm telling y'all in Jesus' name, I want y'all to please hear my heart. Please just lean in and hear your pastor's heart. I'm pleading with y'all this morning. Just because your granny got saved and your mama got saved, that does not graft you into salvation. Just because you're at a Baptist church, hey, that believes in eternal security of the believer does not mean that you can say a prayer, live like hell, and die and go to heaven. Listen to my heart. It does not. It does not. People, honest to God, think they can live like hell and die and go to heaven. I see it and I hear it all the time. It breaks my heart. So hear my heart. Church, you know that's called religion? Huh. Matter of fact, that's called false religion. I'm preaching hallelujah. I was so excited to give this to y'all. Matter of fact, all you're doing is you're building a false tower of Babel. And I see it all the time. There is a difference, lean in. There is a difference between religion and Christianity. Woo! Here, let me show you. There's a religion. There's a religion out there that says, religion says it's man trying to reach God. Woo! Christianity is God reaching man. Mm. Religion's all about works, all about works, all about works. Christianity is all about grace, all about grace, all about that grace, all about that grace, all about that grace. Religion, watch this, is the, is the language of man. Christianity yeah, is the language of heaven. I feel the whole. Do y'all know that heaven has a language? I'm going to get to this too. Heaven has a language. And here's what, here's what religion says. You have to go behind closed doors. Confess your sins to man so you can reach heaven. Religion says you got to be a certain denomination if you want to reach heaven, if you want to touch God. Religion says you got to wear a certain type of clothes. I heard this all my life. You got to wear certain clothing if you want to touch God. Yeah, false religion is man-made rules or guidelines saying, listen, if you do this, you'll touch heaven. That's the difference between religion and Christianity. But how many of you know, that's not what God said. God says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man can build a tower. No man can work. No man has enough money. No man can do anything here on earth to reach heaven. I've got to come down. I've got to touch you. I've got to save you. I've got to rebirth in you. And I've got to rebuild you. Somebody give God praise in here today. How many of y'all are rebuilt? That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Christianity says it's all about Jesus. Religion says it's all about the name. Y'all hear me this morning. Because I know I say this quite often. This is a thus saith the Lord word. You know how I know God's here? Listen. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Sometimes God will silence you so he can speak up. Huh. Huh. Man-made rules, guidelines. Let me give you another one. God says, he says his words, it's not by works, it's by faith. Jesus said, listen to this, for what will, a, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Y'all think about this. If he gains the whole world, 
wealth and fame and success and money, but he forfeit, he loses his soul. Mm. Come on, I'm proud, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. What will it gain a man? Will it gain a woman? Will it gain youth to be popular, to fit in? What will it gain all of us if we're the biggest church in South Central, but the seats are empty? What will it gain us when God has been writing on the wall to turn from your evil ways? Repent, for the kingdom is at hand. We live like heaven's not real. We live, I'm, I'm gonna ask y'all, listen to me. Here's how I know I'm telling the truth. If you knew you had five minutes and your heart was gonna stop, how would you act? If you knew today was your last day, well, Brian, I'm a faithful church member, so is Satan. Well, Brian, I put more money in that little black bag out there in those little, little boxes out in the atrium more than anybody does. Ah, the Bible says the lust of money will send you straight to hell. I'm preaching good. I know this is tough. But listen, it's real. Because listen, if we get this right, God right now is wanting to rebirth and rebuild. Rebirth. If Elkhorn looks like this next year, we didn't rebirth and we didn't rebuild anything. Could it be, could it be, Travis, could it be that God is just really separating the wolves from the sheep? The weak from the tear, the saved from the lost. You can talk it all you want to talk it. But I'm looking for some fruit inspectors. I'm looking for somebody who ain't going to bow down. I'm looking for some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm looking for somebody who's not afraid of the fire, but you'll jump in the fire. I'm looking for somebody that says, you know what? Man, this God stuff's real. The Bible says, choose you this day. I'm talking to somebody. Which report you going to believe? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Choose you this day which report you're going to believe. Feel the Holy Ghost. Choose you this day which report you're going to believe. Choose you this day which report you're going to believe. I choose the report of the Bible. God's report says I'm healed. God's report says, if I be for you, God's report says, I am the head. God's report says, I am blessed. God's report says, there's, there's hell to plunder and heaven to populate. God's report says this thing. I'm telling y'all, y'all can mark this down on the third day of January. This virus is going to pass and we're going to see how tough the church really is. I believe with all my heart, God did not wake up this morning and say, oops, I forgot about that one. God knows exactly where you're at. And some of you are trying to gain the world. And God says, what if you gain this whole world? Let me finish this verse, Bob, because it's so good. I love this. I mean, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm The Bible says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I'm telling y'all, everything that you do here today is being recorded in heaven. I don't like that song. He ain't playing it for you. I don't, I don't, I don't like a preacher that yells. Well, <laughs> a teacher tells it and a preacher yells it. I'm just telling y'all, I believe what I preach. I believe there's a final destination for everybody under my voice today. Some sooner than others. Today could be your last day. And I'm not trying to scare the hell out of you. I'm just trying to get you out of hell. I'm just telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name, don't depend on what your, your past did for you. 
I'm telling you today, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And listen to me very carefully. God never intended to make a religion, a religion, a religion out of Christianity. Can I tell y'all something? Can I tell tell y'all a secret? You know why there's confusion in the church? It's not because somebody speaks in tongues. Tongues is biblical. It's not because somebody prophesies. First, First Corinthians chapter 14, First Corinthians chapter 12 tells us that there's a gift called prophecy. Watch, that don't confuse people. I'm going somewhere. You know what confuses the church? <laughs> when man tries to make it a religion and not a Christianity walk. I'm just telling y'all truth. (laughs) Man will confuse the church every time if he gets in the way. How many of you know that's good preaching? So good. True Christianity is not a religion. So let me ask you a question. Praise him, you guys come. I'm done. You say, really? Yeah, I'm done. Because this is is one out of five. Y'all come back next week, you'll get part two. So let me ask y'all a question. Can I ask y'all a question? Everybody good? Listen to me. This is, this is you got to answer it. <laughs> Are you building a tower? Be, be careful. Are you building a tower? If you are, what kind of tower are you building toward heaven? Are you religious or are you a Christian? And let me ask you this most important one. Have you exchanged anything for your soul? Have you exchanged anything for your soul? Anything. Works. Popularity. Fitting in. Watch this. Here's a good one. Joining the crowd on Christmas Eve. Or New Year's Eve. You say, Brian, that's none of your business. I'm a watchman today. I'm on the tower. And the Bible says that a pastor in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, check me out if you want to, it's my job to watch over your soul. Time to be a shepherd. I don't want any of you to die and go to hell. Nobody. But I'm going to ask you a question. Are you building a tower? Think about how powerful this is. The first false religious system was the Tower of Babel. And they said, no, God, I know you told us something. I know it's in your Bible. (laughs) But God, I I know you really didn't mean that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he meant every single word in that Bible. Can Can I preface this a little bit deeper? Man has no authority to tell God what he can do and what he cannot do. None. So my prayer for all of us here today, while God is in this house and while God is working and why God, while you're sitting there thinking, (laughs) have you exchanged anything for your soul? Anything at all? Anything at all? Courtney, I want you to come here just for a moment. I'm going to obey God. And you know, if I hand you a mic, because a lot of people ask for the mic and I don't give it to them. But when I believe God has a word for his people, I'm going to obey Jesus Christ. How many of y'all are still glad you come to church today? Amen. Amen. Give God praise in here. Come on, Courtney. So, I want Courtney to preach here just for a second. I want y'all to amen her really good because she's got a really good word. Court, woman of God, I want you to speak over this church and Facebook family. All those who are watching by the thousands right now. I want you to tell them what you, sh- what you shared with me back there just a while ago. To share that. So I saw um, Brian. He was over here worshiping with us during the first service. Um, and I actually thought it was uh, Daniel Cook, just the way he looked. And he turned around and somehow got in the light. And the Lord said, no, that's my Daniel. And I've been studying the book of Daniel, and so it's really thick on my heart. But I shared with um, Brian, 
I just, do you ever get that unction and you just can't let it go and you think, I'm not gonna be able to sit through this church service if I don't go just let this out. And so I went, I took Brother Mark and we went backstage and I was just telling Brian, we are in a Babylonian culture. Um, we worship everything but the one true God. We have idols left and right. We spend more time on our phones, um, binge watching something on Netflix or Prime or Hulu or whatever it is you watch. And I'm talking to myself here. I shared that with Tammy this morning in Sunday school. But we, we set up all of these things that get our time and ultimately that is how we worship. We spend time with the Lord. And so I, it's been on my mind because I've been studying Daniel and, and it's set in the Babylonian culture, but my goodness, aren't we there yeah. in America? And I just shared with him, I said, I, I just want you to know that you are our Daniel. And Daniel, when he spoke to the king, whichever king that was in the moment, um, he wasn't hateful and he wasn't mean and he didn't do it with anger. He just said, this is what the Lord says. Amen. And so there's a, there's a stillness today. You know, some days are hoop and holler and woo. And then some days there's a stillness. Because if you're like me, I have to fight against the Babylonian culture that we live in. I have to fight to keep myself in line with the Holy Spirit. But our Daniel is sharing things with us. And we see it, but sometimes, you know, it, it takes somebody else stating it. And then you're like, well, yeah, that's the truth. So I just challenge you today. I challenge Brian to be bold, but I'm challenging us, me first, to take this home and to soak it in. Because what does it profit me yeah. to stay in Facebook, but not in the Word? What does it profit me to binge watch my show and not profit the Word? We have to be diligent. And, and it's not that I am all that bad. I don't set out to murder or to even have false gods. I don't set out to do that. But if we're not careful and if we don't listen to Daniel, um, be help me, Belshazzar, was that his name, the king? Um, is the second king that they talk about in the book of Daniel. He took the, the cups. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar took all of the Hebrew boys, and that's where we get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, into the Babylonian culture. But he didn't touch the holy artifacts. They purged the temple but Nebuchadnezzar didn't touch any of that. So all the golden goblets and all of the things they used to set up the temple of God were put into storage. But, but several years later, I think 30, um, after that, or maybe it was 50, anyway, it doesn't matter. Several years after that, Belshazzar asked for the golden goblets that were supposed to be artifacts of the king, the one true king. And he got them out and he used them. And so they were basically getting drunk with God's golden cups and artifacts that were holy and set apart. But I ask you, aren't we holy and set apart? So if we're not careful, it, it may not take 30 years 
for us to go, well, I'm just going to set them back over here to let me use them for worldly purpose. And so I don't know. I don't know if that's what you wanted me to share or not, but that was just all over me today that we have to be, we have to listen. And Belshazzar didn't listen. Nebuchadnezzar listened. And yes, he went through a stint of he went crazy for about seven years and went in the wilderness and the Lord finally tried to get him in line. But, but Belshazzar, Belshazzar did not listen. And by the end of that party, by the end of the night, he was dead. What if it was that serious for us? What if we didn't get it together? What if we didn't listen? And by the end of tonight, we were dead. So it has to be an anxiousness that we want to do right and that we want to use the Lord's cup for good. And so I just, I'm, I'm grateful for a man that will stand in front of us and tell us the truth. And he's, he's never like, you better get it together because I'm perfect. And if you're going to get in line with me, you better come on. He's never like that. But he is our Daniel who is teaching us and telling us what the Lord is saying. And so I just encourage myself, tear down my, these idols that I have. I need to do that. And I need some of somebody this week to call me and say, hey, how's that going? Because I need accountability. And I, I ask that you would seek that out for yourself as well. Because we live in a culture that if you're not careful, it will take you over. Amen. Amen. It's time to tear down Babylon. I feel that in my spirit this morning. Somebody in here is building a tower. The Tower of Babel. And I'm telling you under the unction of God. At 11.24 a.m. January 3rd, 2021. It is time to tear down Babylon. And I just wonder today, is there anybody with me? I just wonder today, is there anybody that says, you know what, enough's enough? It's time for the church to stand up. It is time to rebirth. It is time to rebuild. I'm not going to have fear in me no more. i got to have faith, God. Give me faith. God, I'm not asking for a bunch of faith. I'm just asking for the faith of a mustard seed. God, if you can give me a faith of a mustard seed, God, I can get my family back. God, I can help, Lord. I can pray. But I'm looking for somebody today that's going to stand with me and say enough is enough. It's time to rebirth. It is time to rebuild. It is time for the church to come back together. It is time to tear down Babylon. Hello. Y'all ain't very convincing today. Y'all ain't very convincing today. I'm talking to you, sir, ma'am. I'm talking to you. God is waiting on the church. God is waiting on me and you. God is waiting on us to come together, to unify, to speak the same language. So in Jesus' name, I don't know where you're at, sir, but I can't get away from this statement. Have you exchanged anything for your soul? What's your Babylon? What's your Babylon this morning? So Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done exactly what you have told me to do. And God, I know your word will not return void. So God, right now, in Jesus Christ's name, save somebody. God, may we come together and unify. Speak the same language and tear down Babylon. We serve a God that's not afraid of the fire. We serve a God that's not afraid of the Red Sea. So God, touch your people. Give them ears. Give them a heart. Give them a zeal. Give them an unction. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. And all God's people say it.